episode one of our Vibing with Velo video series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, asynchronous patterns. Uh, so I'm going to have Meredith here today. It's going to answer some questions. Um, we're going to speak about asynchronous patterns with Velo, why it's important, um, and also uh, the difference between using dot then and also async await. So let's just jump right into things um, and we'll uh, lead over to Meredith. Um, so Meredith, can you tell us why out of like, there's so many functions uh, and different APIs with Velo, um, why would you need this asynchronous function? Yeah, with Velo especially, asynchronous is super important because if you start looking through our API documentation, you'll notice a lot of our APIs are promised. So this means that they are automatically asynchronous. So if you try to work with them and you're confused about why you're not seeing your data, it's probably because you might be unfamiliar with working with asynchronous functions like many of our Velo APIs. Sweet. So like, are there any APIs that, for example, that you can speak of that use asynchronous uh, patterns? So the really popular one we see a lot is Wix data queries. So a query is a promised function. And the reason it's promised is because queries can be really performance expensive. And so we don't want to have the UI wait for the query to finish executing before our users start seeing something. Because if you think about like the last time you were on a website and the information didn't load right away and you were just staring at a blank screen, like did you stay on that website for a long time? No, like pretty much got frustrated or tried to refresh it or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like we don't want our users like churning from our site. So especially when we're doing data-driven operations, we want to make sure we are using those asynchronous functions like Wix data query and using them properly with either the dot then or the async await notation. Sweet. So like to you, why is it so important for uh, a Velo developer to know these things? You're going to see them all over the place, whether you're doing web development on Velo or any other platform. And again, going back to performance, that's going to be a key factor in terms of SEO. So if you want your site to be able to be found, which is probably why you're building a website is you want to be found on the web, you need to make sure you're taking these considerations in into your website building and using asynchronous functions to keep your SEO scores high. Cool. So we're hearing a lot of different words, async, uh, using dot then as well. So if I have a function I want to run in parallel to my code, um, how do I do that? And can you show us? Yeah, I would love to show you guys. So let me go ahead and load up my code editor. So here I have a Wix data query already set up for us and we'll see the dot find um, function here, which is in a promised function. So we need to use dot then. Dot then means we don't have to wait to continue to execute all of the rest of the code in this function while we're waiting for the results from this query. So what we can see here is we will see the results of the query printed after this statement because the code is going to continue to execute in this get pizzas function while we're waiting for the query to return. So let's go ahead and run this. If we go ahead and hit run, we see our console statement printed there first because the code continued to execute while we were waiting for the promise to return with the dot then functionality. And then when dot then gets the callback response from our Wix data query, it goes ahead and prints those results as well, which is why we're seeing it after our print statement at the bottom of our function. Nice. Uh, that's really cool that you can still like run some of these uh, backend functions inside the uh, functional testing tool. Um, so can you also show some examples about using async um, as well? Um, so like now that we we need the output from like an asynchronous function, um, is there a way that we can do this? Um, like maybe let's say from either a front end example or a back end example, whatever one you choose. Yeah, so it's going to be really easy to switch this over to an async await. So maybe we need the output of this, the, of this query for the next operation we have in this function. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the await keyword in front of this function. And what this is going to do is it's going to pause the code and kind of treat this like a synchronous function instead. But because it's now going to be awaited, we need to make sure that the calling function of get pizza, so whoever needs the answer from get pizza is understanding that this is going to be an asynchronous function so they can continue to execute their code. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of this. And we're going to go ahead and maybe set this to a variable because if we want to use the pizza's information afterwards. And then we're going to go ahead and console oops, log pizzas. 
And what we'll see is this is actually printed after the data returns because that await keyword is going to make the code pause while it's waiting for the Wix data query to re return a result. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this old output and run our new code. And as you can see here, we're getting the data first, and then we're seeing that print statement at the end, because again, the code has paused while it's waiting for that Wix data query to finish. Nice. So like to, to you, um, basically it's just like a whole syntactical sugar kind of the way that it looks uh, for when using async. It just, it's easier, to, is it easier to read or to you or is it uh, something else a little more difficult? Async await is easier to read if you need to utilize the data from that function after the function finishes executing because with dot thens and chaining, it can get really complicated and confusing to read the code. So if the information is needed in any execution, in any functionality after that asynchronous call is made, it's better to use async await just for code readability and understandability for your fellow developers. Nice. Yeah. So I tend to use async await um, a lot when I'm like calling to a third party API or something else like that. Um, so I can have all my other functions work along the way and then also have something else execute when all those things are done um, as well. That's great. So, uh, hey, thanks for, for showing us um, async patterns with, uh, with Velo. Um, I don't think there's anything else for us to, to cover, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys here today. So thanks for having me. And hopefully this helps with your asynchronous development pra practices out there. <laughs> Sweet. Well, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.